Yeah, I I think it was in 2012, Brett Easton Ellis released this essay where it was like categorizing American culture. I think it was from like 1945, yeah, end of World War II, all the way through to 2005 as like the period of empire, uh, America being the cultural heavyweight in the world and uh, kind of influencing every other culture through media. And that's where stars were born and it was kind of like uh, a rigid uh, empire that was that was built and there were gatekeepers and they would decide what was cool and who was popular and um, who were going to be the, the faces uh, and representatives of the empire. And in his essay, Brett Easton Ellis uh, posits that from 2005 onwards, there's been a rebellion against the established empire uh, known as, and he, he just categorized it as post-empire and kind of like representatives of post-empire entertainment. So people like uh, Kim Kardashian uh, and Charlie Sheen was like the poster boy of it at the time when he was like, I've got tiger blood. That, uh, that version of Charlie where he was dating the porn stars and then going out doing the live events I'm winning. Uh, so anyway, and I think that that's appealed to me. The essay appealed to me at the time because it did, there did seem to be something occurring uh, where it was essentially like use some entertainers had figured out a way to use the internet to kind of like um, undermine or at least create a separate narrative to what was happening on TV or in movies, separate channels. And then in those early days, it was still relatively underground because a lot of people were still on the grid, man. But then eventually, like now, the tipping point has gone well into the other direction. And now, like, post-Empire has taken over uh, because, yeah, no one watches that old... No one's got a fucking um, cable connection anymore and nobody watches mainstream movies unless it's like a fucking you know joker or top gun 2 or something those movies happen like twice a year whereas before it used to be like once a month there'd be like a big mainstream movie or tv show happening that everyone would give a fuck about however i feel like we're almost like at this other tipping point now because and and i think it's in a weird way related to podcasting because you know, like, stand-up comedians will talk about how Netflix gives out this data that when a comedian um, pushes out a one-hour special on Netflix, the vast, vast majority of um, watchers will have switched off half an hour in. And I can attest to that. Even if it's a comedian I really like, Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle, someone right up my alley... I generally need two, sometimes three goes at watching it all the way through. And uh, because, yeah, I, it's an attention span thing. Like, I just can't commit to the same thing for an extended period of time like I used to be able to. Um, but there is, while that's happening, there's also the weird phenomenon of like long long form podcasting where i can't get through more than like 20 minutes of uh bill burr live at red rocks but yet i'll have him on just rambling about fucking nothing with his monday morning podcast for an hour and uh, i think it's yeah again i'm not paying like as close attention to it but i think it's also what's appealing about the podcast as opposed to the uh, the stand-up special is that it's by design less polished and there is like the veneer of kind of relatability or actual organic connection, like just hearing a buddy rant about his week down the phone on like a, on, as like an elongated voicemail message uh, with like nuggets of hilariousness, but then also just kind of lots of pausing and ums and ahs and, 
Yeah, just just kind of a uh, it, it represents reality more, and so in terms of like this, but but I think that is kind of the issue though is that like in the initial post empire period when Brett Easton Ellis wrote that essay, there was the I guess the attracted you were attracted to these post empire stars because they were going against the narrative but there were limited ways for them to get themselves out there like you couldn't um i don't know charlie sheen didn't have a youtube channel or a podcast or something like that so it was still kind of being filtered through the traditional media anyway in dribs and drabs and so i think you were less susceptible to get bored of cunts whereas now you can be like a reactionary. You can be like a Jordan Peterson. God damn these leftists. These neoliberal cucks. Suck my Canadian hog. You can be that guy. And, but the thing is, you going on these podcasts and you're ranting for hours and hours at a time. And I don't know, everyone has kind of like lost their, it's hard to remain a rock star or have any type of, I don't know, any type of mystique whatsoever when you're just cranking out so much shit where seemingly people, we use these podcasts, we use these YouTube videos as a way to kind of numb out the dreariness and the fucking monotony of our bullshit laptop jobs and so we want three-hour podcasts. We want fucking long-form entertainment, but we don't want to. We wanted. We want it to be really fucking light on the entertainment. We just want lots of fucking, uh, lots of content that's free. And so I don't know. It's very fucking difficult to appear to be a renegade. Or that you don't give a fuck when you're ensuring that your fans get so much of this fucking, so much of you all the fucking time. So I don't know what else to say, but there's probably going to be some weird, like that's why if you are like Andrew Tate or Gavin McInnes, someone of that ilk, or even like Kanye West, you could argue right now. When they get cancelled, uh, and or even like, you know, th- they lose their plat, they they lose their privilege to be on a platform. I think in a weird way that kind of makes you more of a rock star again because, like Gavin McInnes, for example, he doesn't have his YouTube channel anymore, but he has to he can still appear on the the channel when he goes on like the Compound Media show with Kumia. Or he goes on someone else's podcast and he pops up. And so therefore you've got that kind of like, it, it becomes rare again. So I think that like, that is perhaps the next evolution in terms of people being interesting. Because I think all these internet celebrities, initially they were interesting because Joe, Rog- Joe Rogan was a reaction to the, t- to the chat show guy. David Letterman or Jay Leno or whoever because he was on the internet. Now the internet has become so corporate and so regulated and so predictable in that your podcasts are coming out at this time and here's exactly what you're getting. So if you actually get fucking cancelled on the internet, then you've got a chance to actually being a renegade once again and fucking being interesting and not being so... not giving your audience exactly what they want all the time through the expected channels that have been sanctioned and vetted by our new digital overlords so you heard it here first folks podcasting killed the post empire star i uh, don't know what it all means i just know that we're gonna have fun finding out you pieces of shit